His, less, his steadfast love is better than life. My lip will praise him. Thus will I bless him. His steadfast love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. New every morning, whatever it is, wherever you find yourself in life, in your various associations, I want to use this opportunity to say to every woman, Happy Women's Day. Honestly, if I come to the world again, I'll be a woman. I can't miss the joy of breastfeeding. I can't be, miss the joy of being called a mother. Mommy, mommy. I can't miss it. I can't miss the joy of having to be the part of God's progress in creating humanity. Probably you don't even know how powerful a woman is. A woman has 30 solid powers. One of them is the power of intuition. You know, when your child is about to be sick, you just know, something just tells you. Especially our uh, mothers, you know, when you, are, when you are in labor, your mother will just say, I just need to see her, I must see her. Before you know it, she goes to bed. Power of intuition, power of perception, power of stability. A woman is a stabilizing factor. Ask men. <laughs> when a man is not married, they will say, now you are responsible. Meaning that the man is not responsible if he's not married. I don't know why they take it that way. But that shows us that when a woman gets involved in anything, it brings peace, it brings joy, it brings stability, it brings resilience. If your husband comes to tell you and say, I'm going through stuff, and you tell your husband, don't worry, all will be well, relax, it shall be well. Guess what? The man goes to sleep and snores. But if you say you have an issue, and your wife says, I will show you. Just go and commit suicide. Forget it. You can't survive. Women are powerful. The hand that rose the cradle rose the world. Every man slept in a woman's womb. The first few words you taught, we, we, you learned, we taught you. You know, sometimes you have your child speaking some funny languages, probably Hebrew, Greek, and German. And everybody is saying, what is he saying? What is she saying? The mother will just give us the interpretation of what that child is saying. What a joy to be a mother. What a privilege to be a woman. Honestly, if I have to come again, I'll be a woman. Even science has told us that the intellect of your child is that of the mom. It's so, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's so exciting. I'm so happy to be a woman. So I wish every woman, every lady, I had to greet my granddaughter. You know, Happy Women's Day. And she said, Happy Women's Day, Grandma. <laughs> and somebody said, another grandma said, so is she a woman? I said, yes, so that girl, she has the womb, she has the breast, she has everything. It's just growing. Joy, joy to be a woman. Do you know that when the woman and the man had issues at the Garden of Eden, you know, the devil came to the man. He didn't go to the man, he went to the woman. <laughs> I need to break that down. It's dawning on me. Today is toxic or not toxic. I'm hoping my guest will be with me shortly. We've been having some glitches, but it doesn't really matter. Probably, I'm supposed to dedicate today to the Women's Day, probably. Maybe that's what is going to happen. So let me keep flowing and let's see how it goes. Now, God apprehended Adam and said, Adam, what did you do? Now, God is too intelligent to be disorganized. God is dynamic. He knows that it was the woman, of course, that lured the man into the eating of the fruits and all. But when he came, he did not go to the woman. He went to the man. He said, man, what did you do? And you know, life is about taking responsibility. The man said, the woman you gave me. And the woman looked at her husband. He said, I can't blame you, my honey. I love you so much. I can't blame you. God, I will not blame you. I'll blame the devil. And he took the responsibility to the devil, yeah, do something. And God said, because you did not blame your husband, you did not blame me, I'm going to give you power to tread upon serpent, to bruise the head of the devil. Every woman is a, is a demon chaser, is a devil's killer, is a demon's destroyer. You are the bruiser of the head of the devil. From that day, God gave a woman a mandate to bruise the head of the devil. That is why as a woman, the devil must not thrive in your environment. 
not on your watch, not on the watch of your children, not on your watch with your child died, you know, living without fulfilling purpose, under the table of abortion. It's, it's not on your watch that your son will get addicted to drugs and that will be the end. Not on your watch that your child will not fulfill destiny. Not on your watch because God has given a woman the power to, to bruise the head of the devil. Not on your watch would you allow anything, anybody to mess up with what is given to you to take care of, to nurture, to preserve, to protect. Not on your watch. God said, woman, I give you power to bruise the head of the devil. Child, you know, when your head is cut, what else are you waiting for? Everything is gone. It's a matter of time. Anyone that the head is cut is living on it, is going to die, basically. You will bruise his heel. Yes, the devil is bruising heels here and there. But you can't compare someone that is not, that does not have a head. <laughs> That's the head of that person. He's dead. Please, get that straight to your heart today. God has given you as a woman power, potentials, ability. That's why, you know, in counseling, when husband and wife are having issues and you still hear the man say, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, I'm not doing. I is, I don't get myself bothered. But when a woman says, I'm done, I'm scared. I've written 64 books. One of my books is when a woman makes up her mind. When a woman makes up her mind, she's dangerous. <laughs> When a woman makes up her mind, it's dangerous. If a woman is ready to keep a home, protect something, preserve something, she's ready to die. She won't let it go. Ask so many women all over the world that have done extraordinarily, supernaturally well in their various lives and vocations and endeav endeavors. You will see that there's something about them. This power of resiliency is carrying me solid. Look at the Queen of England. That woman is an institution to be studied. Today is International Women's Day, and I'm sincerely celebrating every woman that has been strong in the midst of the storm, that has made themselves to stand out, and they don't allow the, the waters of life, the trials, the temptations, the crises of life to, to drown them. They still stood out. I said, no, I have an unbreakable spirit. I'm strong. I'm a woman, I'm a mother. I celebrate every woman that has been through stops in their little life. Probably you're a single mother, you have to nurture your children and take care of them till date. Probably you just, you know, you had a fling, you know, you made a mistake, got pregnant, and that was it. And you said to yourself, I'm not aborting this child. I'm going to see that child to life. And you did everything to take that child to a place of prominence. Today, I celebrate you. Probably you are even hearing me. You're a widow. You have to struggle everything out and juggle it out. Juggle, juggle, juggle. Now, it's, bec it's becoming a reality. Some, your own is still not yet a reality. You are still trusting God for the next meal. You are believing God for school fees. You are just believing that things are going to work out the way you want it. I'm still celebrating you. You're worth celebrating. You're worth appreciating. If I have to do this today, to just let every woman know that I'm hugging you, I'm kissing you, I'm holding you firm. I, I'm just, I'm excited about you because sincerely, you are making me proud. Thank you. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not hanging your willows. Thank you for not singing the Lord's song in his strength land. I want to celebrate women also that have been through stops. They are going through a lot of financial pressure and they've told themselves, not my body. I work hard. I will do all jobs. I will clean. I will wash plates. I will do anything. Those all jobs I will do, but not my body. I want to appreciate every woman that has kept their dignity as a woman in the place of chastity, sexual purity. That's my heart anyway. I really, really appreciate you. If you have done it, people would have said, well, she didn't have a choice. You know, things are not well. Things are not easy. Yeah, she has no choice. You know, that would have been probably a good alibi. But some of you that said no, no, I won't do it. I will keep myself I will suffer children if it's only one meal we'll have a day. Let's have it. But I'm not going to sell my body. Because of portage, I'll sell my birth right. I'm not going to do it. I'll pay the price. I'm paying the price of purity. I celebrate such women today. I, actually, if I had remembered, I would have just pushed today to special edition 
for women because we are celebrating International Women's Day. I really appreciate you. You don't know how much I have listened to so many women that have to do the other side. They have to do another thing. They have to get involved in so many things because they will tell themselves they don't have a choice. But some have kept themselves. I remember one woman said, you don't understand. The death of this man has brought me to a place of embarrassment. Men want to sleep with me, to help me, to feed to clothe my children. Ama, I did it once because I didn't have a choice. And they weep bitterly because they did what they are not supposed to do. Some have wept on my shoulders. And I've told them, I told one today, I said, Madam, hear me. You have said it to me. It's a close case. You are forgiven. The sin of whom you remit is remitted. Start a new life. Don't do it again. Her conscience began to rock her to the marrow. Because she felt I, I have disappointed God, I've, I, I've, I've done the abominable. But honestly, sometimes you don't have a choice. I told her, I said, I, I don't have to do it because I'm hardworking. But if you have to, if you find yourself in a place where you have to do everything and you are vulnerable and somebody is, somebody is just there, you know, out there that wants to take advantage, profiting by your problem, by your predicaments. And you, probably you just felt, just this once, let me just pay these fees. Please forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. But don't do it again. Adultery is a curse. God said marriage is honorable. Bed undefiled. Warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. When God judges a man, nobody can help that man. And let me tell you a secret today. If you're a woman, you're listening to me. If you allow yourself to sleep around in the name of whatever, high libido, whatever, you are cursing your children because your children pass through you. A woman is a passage to the world. You don't want to put a curse on your child because you cannot hold yourself. And that's why you need to be accountable. If you are privileged to have an accountability person, you win in the battle of life. I'm, I'm so accountable. You have a right to ask me questions, to probe me, and, you know, I'm just a book. So I don't have any secret, anything. Don't come, somebody, somebody. You won't be able to talk. And we are living in a generation that our children, everybody around us would ask. They, they might not talk because they respect you, but they are still talking. You don't want to be in that place where people will look at you and ease and say, mm, what's wrong with her? We know what she's doing. No. Nah. I was saying it on radio recently. I said, dead or alive. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. It's not, it's not being negatively proudful. I'm grateful that I kept my dignity for every woman in the midst of whatever it is. You've been able to keep your dignity. You did not sell your birth rights. You did not, because of one minute, pleasure and have eternal pressure. You are, you, you are distanced from God. Sin detaches us from God. Sin makes you not to connect. Some people, they have killed their conscience. Though. They will still go and sleep around and lead in church. They will go and sleep around and sing. They will go and sleep, sleep around and serve. But some consciences has been seared with a, with a hot iron. But there are some that their conscience is very, very alive, alert, and sensitive. I celebrate such women. You don't know why I'm saying this. I've listened to a lot of things today and I just told myself, I said, wow. Women go through stores. Some stands out. Some, some are outstanding. Some had fallen. But if you are falling, let's go back. Let's, let's take it back again. Let's take your life back and let's go on this journey of recovery. It is very important. You can't afford to make yourself a subject of shame. Oh, somebody said you don't understand. The shame is much. Shame is redeemable. The only thing that is not redeemable is death. So don't let the enemy keep haunting you and be torturing you, telling you you've done this, you've done that. Let it go. Your sin and iniquity, you will remember no more. God keeps no record of wrong. If God tells you that love does not keep the records of wrong, God will not tell you what he's not doing. It means that God does not keep the records of wrong. As long as there is repentance, there is penitence, we go, we move, we make progress. So I want to celebrate every woman at the sound of my bowels this moment, 
probably it's in the morning at your end we are in the night almost getting to bed here yeah. i'm in nigeria at the moment and i want to really really say thank you to every woman that have done extraordinarily in their generation until i deborah arose a mother in israel wow 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 until i deborah arose a mother in israel she made a decision to stand out and to be outstanding in the midst of stiff oppositions in the midst of not being able to be a voice in the midst of chaos she said ah there's a problem and you know one thing about a woman that I want you to understand when a woman takes her place in destiny in any assignment or not it gives room for other women to take their place mm. it gives room for other women to find destiny so if you choose not to, a woman is a generation. Probably I should put it this way. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. Let me just continue. I beg, I beg, I beg. A woman is a generation. There's a woman a generation causes. The generation of Delilah, they will cause her for life in the act of destroying the anointed. There's a woman her generation blesses. Do you know Mary said, Behold, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord from this day henceforth. All generation will call me blessed. Do you know my beloved brethren in Catholic, you know, religion or organization, they still worship Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. She saw beyond what she was going through. She, she saw beyond being pregnant without a physical husband. She saw beyond the shame and the embarrassment. She looked beyond the pain for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He despised the shame for what was on the inside of her. She just said to herself, I don't care. I'm not pregnant by having sex with a man, but I'm pregnant. I accept the mystery. I accept the mystery. You know, there's a mystery. There's a mystery that is being miserable and the mystery of what I don't understand. I accept the message and I receive the messenger. And she said to herself, from this day henceforth, with my resilience, with my determination, with what I've made up my mind to do, all generation become a blessed she spoke her future into reality she's a woman her generation blesses there are women her generation ignores because they just cross the path of life without making an impact without allowing their names to be written in the book of men's hearts not the book of life is bible i know they, they, are, they walk on this side of life. They don't have their footprints on the sands of times, touching lives. A woman her generation ignores. I've seen women that their generation ignores because they refuse to take their place in people's lives. As a woman, there is no body, there is no human being that crosses your path that should say, Oh, I regret this. Why, 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 why? I wish I had not met you. I caused the day I met you. Those words is not good for a woman that her generation will bless and her generation would celebrate. Don't let your generation ignore you. Don't let your generation curse you. Ah, Jezebel, her generation will curse her. Let your generation bless you. We are all living for eternity. There's life after life. There's life after death. Be generational conscious. Anything you do, be, be, be conscious of tomorrow. Be conscious of the next 10, 5 years. Be conscious of where you're going to die. We are all going to die. Death is a debt. We have to pay the debt. But when we are sure that we, we are convinced about our lifestyle, we will know that a generation will not cause us ignore you so for these few minutes i've spoken to us i just felt i should charge you and celebrate every woman today because today is international women's day let me check if my guest is here the reason why i'm bringing a professor to come and share with us actually is you know you know when i talk like this i'm i'm versatile i'm everywhere and I really want to address this issue of narcissistic personality disorder from the angle of a professional. But let me say this to you. 
and take it to your heart. I will just break some things down for you. The moment you see this, when Professor Oli comes, he will still help us to break it down. He will help us to break it down psychologically, professionally, you know, in the light of his being a lecturer and how he teaches narcissistic personality disorder. But let me tell you something. If you are having these experiences, you are living with a narcissist. You are living with a man that does not care. Are you getting me? So um, I, I wrote it down here. Hmm. And it could be your parents. Please don't only look at personality disorder, uh, NPA, narcissist personality disorder, from the angle of a male alone. No, 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 we have both male and female. We have them in our parents. We have them in our parents. So please, and friends and bosses. But when you are experiencing this kind of thing, is a trait that you experience in that relationship. Just know that there is a problem. That is lack. Lack. When you are relating with a narcissist, he will not want you to be financially independent. So they, not that you are not useful, but he wants to to suffer. You will see wickedness. When I say financially independent, if he's clothing you, feeding you, giving you money, that's not lack. You are getting what I'm saying. There's a case I'm handling. I'm sure she's listening to me now. Her. She actually told his wife to go and resign. And she said she's not resigning. And she, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you true stories. Of course, in my profession, you don't expose people's secrets. So I'm just, you know, saying it on the side like that. Now, the man said she should go and resign. And she said she's not resigning. The, now, the man now brought out, he has been having extramarital relationship. He now brought out the, the picture, the proof of his adultery. I said, look at this girl. She's dying for me. I don't want to be too detailed, you know, so that, you know, at least it's vague. What I'm discussing is vague. That this person is, is loving me. Is, she's more beautiful. She's more beautiful than you. Da, 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 da. So if you don't want me, this girl, I just slept with her yesterday. And he still came to want you to sleep with the wife. You lack sanity. Financially, you are in lack. You don't see empathy. You don't see empathy. The person is not wearing your shoes. What is empathizing? Emp empathy means you put somebody else in your shoes. I've sat down to counsel with people that are married to this personality disorder and you are just, con you are saying it in your depth of debt. This man is wicked. You are wicked. A lady just called me now. She's just getting into therapy. She said, Ma, I didn't know my husband has blocked to me. And I had police case and he was not picking. They just want to, oh, they are wicked. They don't have empathy. They don't have human feelings. They are, they are numb to life. Then they manipulate. Oh dear Lord. They play mind game. They want to get at something. They do something. If you find yourself in that kind of relationship, your mom, your boss, your wife, your husband, just know that you are in trouble. You need to get into therapy as fast as yesterday you can never be free you can never overcome you can never leave i'm talking about being alive if you don't have a strong solid support system dealing with a narcissist the program today is is it toxic or not toxic and we are dissecting personality disorder i'm expecting my guest if you can join us that would be good but probably we have to invite him to come closer uh, we are doing instagram live probably he'll be downstairs i'll be upstairs or something but it has to be done i'll make sure that i resolve that i wanted to hear from the another person judgmental now you know women naturally people naturally when uh you are you are going through stuff you want to share with someone 
that you think the person will show a little bit of empathy and feel you but they will judge you they will judge you they will make you feel may, let me give you a practical example probably you are late to work and you are sat instead of showing it at the time i'm not saying now don't get me wrong we need to balance this there are times you're actually not good with what you're doing you didn't do it well it's different correction is different from judgment that was why i brought the issue of losing your job i have someone that lost her job because she was very good and she she you know i don't want to give details i've been tempted to give details but i'm not going to give the details and um because she did not do some you know dot the i's and cross the t's in her place of work she was sad do you know what the narcissist husband did he actually googled some women while she was at the heat of the battle not being sure if she was going to be arrested not being sure if she was going to be restored where she still have to face panels because she did a mistake she made a mistake in that you know in her job the man you know what he did he went online and googled women that did fraud and they were jailed and sent it to her she act he actually prophesied her future that's the kind of people they are you can have them as bosses you can have them as friends you can have them as husband as wife and all of that they are very very let me put it this way they have a sense of entitlement they never see life as a privilege it's my right to do this it's my right life is a privilege they have this sense of entitlement they believe even if you are doing business together it has to be he or she or her alone i'm being i'm trying to be a little bit on the very simple way in, in analyzing this i don't like being giving too much of you know psychotherapy psychological words and all of that because i know that they can can believers be a narcissist yes okay questions are rolling in so that's a good one now let, let me put it this way yes now i would have gone into the background of narcissistic personality disorder but let me do that because of this question now your parents can make you a narcissist i have children that maybe they are sickly maybe they are they are the kind of children that are always you know um going through stores maybe you have to resuscitate them after being ill you know they are just less you know they are less active because of that that's one side i'm coming to the other side because of that they start allowing them and indulging them to get away with things you can make a narcissist out of a child now when you are born again i've said it before is your spirit that is born again your soul is not born again your body is not born again when your, your spirit man is born again now the seat of personality disorders and all of that when you want to understand the the foundation of any form of personality disorder you check the foundation because every child comes to the world blank now the adamic nature is there which is the falling nature but some other personalities some other traits are developed when you are growing up some you know we have had to do um texts for some people checking their personality and we notice that they have depression they have depressive personality disorder why when they were growing up there were things that had happened to them over the years that has put them in a gloomy place a place of no joy no happiness so over the years they are just in that dark place in their lives that was not god's plan for them but over the years they had been damaged by the reason of their upbringing now that is how it happens with a narcissist a child can be raised as a narcissist a child can have this personality disorder by the reason of being over pampered then it could be maybe he's the only child or is the gifted child and everybody who hero worships him make him feel special make him feel important because of that that person can become a narcissist because everybody feared him everybody is shaking and all of that if you a child is raised like that it can end up being a narcissist now you are saying a christian I've, i can tell you so many people that are believers and they are narcissists 
Now, what the challenge we have with having this personality disorder is very simple. They don't know they have a problem. A narcissist will apologize. A narcissist will work on himself. That's the difference between a narcissist and someone that is, is not a narcissist. A person that is not a narcissist, well, even if they have, they lack empathy, they lack sympathy, they, they make you feel miserable, they are vindictive. Did I mention being vindictive? No, I didn't even mention that. They are judgmental, they have a sense of a, a, a entitlement, they are argumentative. The moment you start bringing those truths to them, in the light of that truth, you will see efforts to change. They will start working on themselves. But these people we call narcissists, they cannot change. What changes a man is, oh, I'm sorry. What I did was wrong. I, I apologize. That is what changes a man. All of us, we grow, we change. But a narcissist does not have insight. So it's difficult for them to change. Please don't think a narcissist will change. And you cannot survive a narcissist if you don't have a support system they would turn your you will you go for me you will just die i have ladies that i'm helping now that they are they are dealing with cancer a lot like, like four of them i said it in one of my programs they have to do chemo some of them they have removed their breast they have to you know put silicone and all of that because it eats you all it's like you are you are living in hell how do i explain you are living it's like you are it's like you're in the presence of you are with a vampire something that drains your blood removes energy so you are just you are every day you are surviving women that have survived this monster that have been able to overcome this evil they are women that got help from their support system ah i'm trusting god that professor only will be here today but whatever happens I'm going to bring him back or get another professor or doctor to come and address this matter with us in the coffers of their home. I, I, I just told him, I said, you are old, very, very old. He's an old man, actually. Now, listen to me. A narcissist does not have insight. What changes a man is insight. And let me tell you, some of you that are in the clutches or in the web of a narcissist, they don't let their prey go. You are not going anywhere. So the first principle for coming out of the bondage of these people, we call it the principle of no contact. You cut them off. And don't forget they have allies. We call them lieutenants. They have people they are baited into their lies. And those people will come at you. So the best thing to do is the principle of no contact. Listen, you cannot be free from a narcissist in isolation. Take it to the bank. It has never happened. I've seen people that are under the, the web of religion. Oh, church, religion, prayer, pray, pray. Excuse you. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. I tell ladies, especially those that are married to a narcissist, I tell them, I say, listen to me. If God is your father, will he treat you like this? Now, every narcissist has addiction. In addition to their narcissistic personality disorder, some of them have, they sleep around. They are into multiple sexual relationships. Some are even gambling. Some steals. Some lies. Some are into all sorts into politics lots of them now if you are not careful you will just find that you are not living somebody say even even pastors yes of course <laughs> yes they are everywhere it's it's a, it's a mental illness it's like you, are, you somebody is mad actually it's a mental illness but this cannot some mental illness can be treated some cannot be treated narcissistic personality disorder is a disorder that cannot be treated don't deceive yourself when they are born again their spirit that is born again if they are the kind of narcissist that is not sleeping around blah 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 if they are the type that sleeps around and they go to a prostitute and uh, the trumpet sounds 
<laughs> if they're on top of the prostitutes. I'm not sure. I'm not the one that will determine if they go to heaven or not. But I know that heaven is for holy people. That's one thing I'm sure of. So you're going to live your life continually in pain if you don't get a solid support system. And let me tell you something. Dealing with a narcissist is a marathon race. Because as they come into your life to torture you, to make you miserable, the pain is inflicted to your children. Everything about you is afflicted. Pain is inflicted into them. So as you are trying to save your life, that's why I will keep emphasizing this point that, and this fact that you cannot be free from a narcissist in isolation you need a strong solid support system get into therapy now be intentional because there's nothing like protecting your mental health i've seen a mad man not successful this is the way i used to put it i've seen a short man succeed I've seen a blind man succeed. Steve Wonder is, is, is blind. I've seen a deaf man succeed. I've seen a man on a wheelchair succeed. I've seen people that have no limbs, so, so I will not be mentioning names, successful. But I've never seen a mad man succeed. The moment you lose your mind, you are out of life because you are not conscious of what is going on around you. So you cannot afford to keep yourself trying to have faith that you see some of us, you know, people that are in such relationship, especially the religious ones. Oh dear, those are the ones that really, really made me so sad and feel sick because they just what is it that God cannot do? God can change anybody. Please take it to the bank. You know, we are living in a global village. What I'm saying to you is just that you see me say it. Google a narcissist. Just Google, can a narcissist change? They will answer. You will see no and reasons in 1,000 places. But when you notice changes, the person is repentant, the person is penitent, is ready to... He has weaknesses. Weaknesses is different from being a, having a narcissistic personality disorder. Such people would work on themselves, make progress, make more commitment, having the fear of God, I want things to work out well. They are never wrong. A narcissist can never be wrong. They will wriggle out of the truth. They will give you one thousand. If they are in, if they are committing adultery now, maybe they went to act out. They will say it's because you are not, you are not meeting my sexual needs and all of that. They must give an alibi for whatever they are doing. So how do you, how do you do that? Then they pull you down. They pull you down. I remember, you know, several episodes of having to, you know, live with a narcissist. The person is just evil, evil. You are wondering where is sympathy? Where is empathy? Where is kindness? Where is love? Where is love? Hey, a narcissist does not have the capacity to love. They can't love. Love is impossible for them. I'm talking about whether erotic, uh, in agape, filio, uh, whatever. All the, those Greek work of, word of love, they don't have the capacity to love. So they can't love you. You have to take your life back. And you take your life back on one condition. Get into a therapist. You cannot heal from the wound and the torture that a narcissist brings to the table if you don't have people you are vulnerable to. You open yourself. It's like going to the surgery. You don't wear clothes going to the surgery table. You just, wear, you just tie something. You, you allow the doctor, the surgeon, to cut you back and forth. And before you know it, you are back to life. So please do everything to make sure that you get into therapy. I've talked about blaming. They'll blame you. 
Now, they shame you. You know why they shame you? It's very interesting. They shame you because they are looking for something to say about you. They are looking for something, especially if you are the kind of a person that you have opened up to them. Maybe you had a past and you told them everything about your past. Wow! That is a weapon in the hand of a narcissist. He will make sure that he puts you in a difficult place where you will, the things you've talked to, to him or her in the secret, your secret that the person knows is going to bring it to the open. I don't know why people think they can survive in such a toxic environment. Then they are jealous, they are envious of you. As a matter of fact, they are so jealous when they look at you, they will assume because maybe you are beautiful or you are intelligent or you are thriving in your profession. The next thing is envy. Envy. They, they, they envy you. They tell you something that you, is it because of this? You are sleeping with your boss. Your boss is promoting you. You are, you are, you are not doing well. It's a lie. They be looking for any loophole, something to use against you. And the secret is jealousy, envy. They are not satisfied with what they have. They are not grateful with who they are and what God has made them to be. And they are very, very arrogant. Arrogant. Everything must be around them. You must worship them. You must, you, you don't worship them, you are in trouble. And it's God that you are supposed to worship, actually. Now, don't get me wrong. Relationship deserves honor. There's a place for honor. There's a place for respect. But I'm telling you, oh, I saw a request. I hope maybe that's Professor. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sure he's, he couldn't figure it out. Not a problem. We'll come back to it. Ah, and they are very sensitive. Listen, let me just say this. If you find this, I'm still going to break them down in, you know, clips of teachings and all. All these things that I'm talking about start from childhood. When a child... Now, another thing that sets people off for of being a narcissistic or being a narcissist is this. When you are raised from a family system that you are tortured, rejected, abused. The guy that I brought yesterday said they actually wanted to make him a rebel. They want him to become a killer. Now, when a child grows up from that kind of environment that is heavily toxic and they are bringing the wild beast out of that child, you can actually end up being a narcissist. But yeah, you know, the formative years of the child matters a lot. And that's why I always, tomorrow I'll be, I think tomorrow is um, being sexualized as parents. I'm still going to flog that. Protect the souls of your children protect the souls of your children don't expose your children to any form of toxicity any form of violence that is it's all under toxicity violence rage physical abuse you know talking tongue lashing saying things that will mess up the life or the, the emotional life of that child you can breed a narcissist without you knowing because everybody has something we call the fight or flight you want to defend yourself. So when issues are coming all the time, you are, you are being treated like, you know, as if you're not a human being. You keep, you know, wanting to fight, to fight, to fight. Before you know it, you become very, very bad. And you can actually become a narcissist. When I get Professor Uli to come or look for another person to help us to handle this, I would have to probe into that person and ask a lot of questions. Listen to me, if you are married or you are in a relationship with that person, you need to quickly rush into counseling. Now, now let me balance this. I've mentioned a lot of things here today and you cannot conclude that this person is a narcissist until you get into the place of a professional for intervention. Because a lot of people, because of what they are going through in their relationships, they can just, maybe they are even being disciplined or they're trying to, you know, put them in order and all of that. They can conclude that this person is a narcissist. No, you have to be sure. You have to professionally go deep into their lives 
and the experiences they are having with such a person, then we can say, okay, we can conclude that this person is a narcissist. If you're in a relationship, if anything happens and everybody can come to a, a dialogue table and it can be resolved, it means that there is no personality disorder that is called MPA there. If you are in a relationship, the person takes responsibility for their actions and their reactions. It might not be that the person is a narcissist. It's just that the person is growing and developing. And, you know, that's why we, maybe one of these days, I will handle the issue of temperament. There are what we call personalities, the thinker, the talker, the detailed, and the boss. They all have weaknesses and strengths. Because I teach, I'm careful about disseminating information in a toxic way for people to be assuming that this is it when it is not. If your husband is, for instance, a fled male, you are dealing with a phlegmatic and a melancholy, Jehovah. Such people, we analyze everything, talk, 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 talk about everything, repeat everything like a broken record, and before you know it, it becomes toxic. That does not make the person a narcissist. It's just that these are the weaknesses of this person's temperament. We need to balance that. Okay, let me look for lies now because a narcissist also lies. Now, there are some temperament that lies naturally. The sanguine, the extrovert, they exaggerate. They, they magnify everything and make it big. Now, you cannot conclude that your, your father, your mother, your wife or husband is a narcissist because he lies. Some temperament are not straightforward. Peter is one. Peter is an example of <laughs> a talker that will lie one minute after the other. He told Jesus, I will not, I will not deny you. And Jesus said, before God could, three times, will you deny me? And one small boy just came to him and said, bro, bro, are you with Jesus? Me, if I'm with Jesus, let it. He started, you know, cursing himself. That's, that's, that's not a narcissist. That's the weaknesses of his temperament. So we need to understand that. Um, so don't, please, don't quickly conclude. As I said, get into therapy. Send me a link in my bio. Let's analyze. Let's hear what is going on before we can conclude that this person has a personality disorder that is called a narcissist. I want to say thank you to everyone that have listened to me tonight. We spent almost one hour. Imagine. I enjoy, I love my work. There's a way, let me, let me say, let me quickly, you are going to answer me. Please write it. Help me to write it. Have you ever taken revenge on a narcissist who ever hurt you? I want somebody to ask, to put it down on the screen for me. Have you ever taken revenge on a narcissist who ever hurt you? There's a way to revenge. Ah, if you are listening to me and you are, you have a narcissist, in your life, I will teach you vengeance. Sweet revenge is not a, you know, tit for tat or tooth for tooth. No, no, no. You take your life back in such a way that the person is seeing you like this. Say, yeah. He's, he's dropping saliva. You are taking care of yourself. I told one lady, I said, get to the gym. Quick. Lose weight. Mental detox. Take care of yourself. Let your beauty come out. I hope I'm not letting out the net, the cat out of the net already. Hello, have you ever taken revenge on a narcissist who ever hurt you? Listen, revenge is sweet though. The best revenge is to be successful. And we're going to break it down. Some of you have to tell, oh, let me not, let me not continue like this. Because I feel like just, you can revenge a, a narcissist by getting into therapy that's the first step and please don't be sentimental about it don't be emotional about it if you come into therapy with me one thing i do is i make you to sign having an oath of commitment to obey because any man any woman that is related or relating or is the, in the web of a narcissist is also an enabler you have you, you allowed it you you, en you, you endured it. And there are things you are doing too. Oh, let me take you to this place, to this place again. If you are raised from a dysfunctional home, if you are raised from a dysfunctional home, 
where it is really really toxic there's a, going to be an attraction i can show you scriptures i don't have all the time tonight there's possibility of you getting attracted to a person that is also toxic i can show you scriptures i don't want to go into scriptures now that's why women or men that are married to a narcissist the first thing we do when we are clacking them is to get them to find out tell me about yourself be marrying as a virgin does not stop you from getting into a wrong relationship i'm doing therapy for a lady she said she kept her virginity now she saw her dad beat her mom multiple times multi she said she grew up in a, in a home that whatever happens they must be throwing bottles flinging everything serious conflict she said that was how it was so when she gave her life to christ i will end with this story when she gave her life to christ she became addicted to god kept her virginity never allowed a man to touch her anyhow she was so deep in god but she did not deal with her baggage now she's married in that marriage i won't give you the details anymore because she did not deal with her baggages i'm using this opportunity again to tell you to join me on the 25th of march for dynamic parenting webinar it's going to be powerful it's going to be explosive i'm going to teach us how to raise super kids how to raise mentally emotionally psychologically matured good children the reason why I'm saying mentally, emotional, psychological, good children is this. I didn't say academics. You can go to the best university in the world, Harvard, and be so wrecked. There's a guy that was taken to rehab. He's a professor. I'm telling you the truth. On drugs. You want to tell me a doctor, professor, I'm telling you the truth. He's in the rehab treating mental illness because he's addicted to drugs meaning that all the education all the information was just in his soul and the same soul is wounded please if you are if you have any form of dysfunctionality growing up be be confident enough to seek intervention help from people that will help you if you don't you're an accident that is about to happen I saw something on Easter blog today. Uh, the person said, ah, let me try and look for it. I, I'm not, I'll try and look for it. He said, the person said that nobody can stop him from taking drugs. Don't let me see what will make me stop smoking. <laughs> and I just said, wow, don't tell me. Don't let me see what will make me stop smoking. That is a brain that is damaged already. And the brain is, a, is like an elastic. The more you stretch it with drugs, the more it stretches and it's not likely to come back to normal. So you know that for somebody to put, put this in a public domain, I'm not judging him, ask him about his background. Let's see where he came from. Let's check his dad and his mom. You will understand that. He's not saying that because he wanted to be, you know, to become a nuisance or whatever. But he's saying that because that's the life he knows how to live and that, that was how he was raised so let's go down to the foundation and get life and take our lives back thank you everyone okay is narcissistic personality yeah okay somebody is asking is it hereditary mm, 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 mm. now the issue of being something being like a pattern of the family hereditary or being a pattern of the family it's actually possible for someone to pick a pattern for instance somebody said there's diabetes in the family everybody has they are obese in the family now it's not that they were that it was that they, it was that they were diabetic in the family or is a pattern of the bloodline is a lifestyle that has degenerated to that for instance if in your family everything must be fried you fry egg, you fry dodo, you fry beans, you fry yam, you fr everything must be fried. And everyone has grown up. You must fry chicken, you must fry fish. 
So every and in that family, everybody is on the big side. Now your green grandmother fries everything, your mother fries everything, hand over the button to you, then it becomes the pattern of the blood bloodline. So you can say, Oh, diabetes is, is hereditary. No. The point is that what if you have a father that is a narcissist, your mother is a narcissist, possibility of being a narcissist is not is not cannot be ruled out because of the pattern or your grandfather is the same thing with addiction. There are three inlets to sexual addiction. I have one minute to go. There are three inlets to sexual addiction. The bloodline, I think I said it yesterday, the bloodline. That's what we're talking about you know, inheritance. Then we have the you have um, trauma. Trauma. Trauma based addicts. Then we have the addictive society. So it's the same. We could actually relate it to that. But the the only challenge we have about a narcissist is that they don't have insight. So they think everything is fine. So they keep blaming their victim. They keep blaming their spouses without sitting down to take responsibility for their actions. And honestly, what changes a man is when you are repentant and you, are, you apologize and you're sorry. So if you are the kind of a person that will never say sorry, you don't see nothing wrong in your attitude, in your character, you might be a narcissist. And you know, even in my profession, uh, I, I would have asked Professor Oli today, but I still, I would still have him, is when you ask them, do you want to treat a narcissist? They will say no. They are very, very difficult to manage. That's tough, that's tough. But I've seen one woman that actually tells us that she's a narcissist and she has worked on herself in such a way that when you have the Holy Spirit, you hear me? You know, because I deal with the public and, you know, I try not to bring my faith inside, but that's who I am and I cannot rule that out. When you allow the Spirit of God to take charge of your life, you can drop that act of narcissistic personality disorder. Joyce Mayer will always tell you that she became a narcissist because her father slept with her for over 200 times. I told you the foundation of narcissistic personality disorder. They made her tough. They made her aggressive. She became very, very selfish. Some of these things I, I read to you, I mentioned today, were found in her. But today, she's a woman that should be celebrated, pardon me, on this International Women's Day. I appreciate the fact that I rounded it off with her story. She's no more a narcissist. She has worked on herself. She has allowed the Holy Spirit to take charge of her life. And she's a blessing today. So, if a narcissist, even on the pulpit, is a pastor and he can walk on himself and tell himself, I can't die in this accident or whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm going to change. There's no one the Holy Spirit cannot change. Or it has to be yourself, making yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. So, it depends on life is a choice, basically. But whatever choice we make, we have the consequences of our choices. You can make your choice, but you cannot. You can choose your choice. You can't choose the consequences of your choice. Wow, it's been awesome in this one hour, and I appreciate the fact that I was able to give out a little I could today. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Let's do love, love, love. Let's share. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow.